If he's not going to disarm, we'll disarm him in order to make the world a more peaceful place. And if he ends up with a nuclear weapon and uses it. There are no war plans on my desk. Um, I haven't changed my opinion about Saddam Hussein, however. I told John, we'll use all uh, tools at our disposal to, to deal with him. And of course, I, I, before there's uh, any action or military action, I would closely consult with our close friend. There are no plans on my desk right now. Uh, this is a man who is trying to stall for time. He's trying to play a diplomatic game. He's been successful at it for 12 years. Um, but uh, no, I mean, the, 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 the question is, will he disarm? I noticed somebody said the other day, well, we need more inspectors. Well, a disarmed, a country which is disarming really needs one or two inspectors to verify the fact that they're disarming. We're not playing hide and seek. That's what he wants to continue to play. And so, uh, you know, Saddam's got to disarm. If he doesn't, we'll disarm him. We will also discuss future threats that we face, all of us face, the dire possibilities that outlaw regimes will develop weapons of mass destruction and uh, use them with terrorist organizations or use them on their own against countries which love freedom, countries such as Portugal. Saddam Hussein <clears throat> has defied the United Nations 16 times. If I... Not once, not twice, 16 times he has defied the UN. The UN has told him uh, after the Gulf War what to do, what the world expected. And 16 times he's defied it. And enough is enough. The UN will either be able to function as a peacekeeping body as we head into the 21st century, or it will be irrelevant. And that's what we're about to find out. Uh, we don't need a second resolution. It's clear this guy could even care less about the first resolution. We concluded that tomorrow is a moment of truth for the world. Many nations have voiced a commitment to peace and security, and now they must demonstrate that commitment to peace and security in the only effective way, by supporting the immediate and unconditional disarmament of Saddam Hussein. And it had weapons of mass destruction. It's well known it had weapons of mass destruction. And uh, uh, we also got to recognize that he spent 14 years hiding weapons of mass destruction. I mean, he spent an entire uh, decade making sure that inspectors would never find them. Iraq's the size of the state of California. It's got tunnels, caves, all kinds of complexes. We'll find them. And um, it's going to be a matter of time to do so. Uh, what are we learning? Well, we're learning that, uh, for example, that Tariq Aziz still doesn't know how to tell the truth. He didn't know how to tell the truth when he was in office. He doesn't know how to tell the truth when he's been a as a captive. And uh, the, but, but we will find out a lot about the nature of the uh, Hussein regime uh, as time goes on. Because, you know, it, 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 more and more people will come forward. It may not be the aces, kings, and queens, and jacks that do the talking. It may be those who were doing the, uh, carrying the water for the aces, kings, queens, and jacks that do the talking. But thanks to you, the Iraq we stand in tonight is dramatically freer, dramatically safer, and dramatically better than the Iraq we found eight years ago. And so the United States military, with a vast coalition, removed this man from power, and the world is better off for it.